In this video, I will be explaining all the changes that has happened in Better Tears to compare to the vanilla game in detail, all the balance changes, all the reworks, all the new modifiers, all the new roll buckets. So let's get started. Our first change is new roll buckets. So we have five new roll buckets. First of all, Common Town. Common Town is a random town, but without the town power rolls. Uh, we feel like balancing lists can be done easier with roll buckets like common town common coven is also the same thing it's coven rolls but not coven power so like we can restrict the amount of town power in a list with this roll bucket for example in the coven town trader list we can make two random towns common town and so like a maximum three town powers could spawn this is like marshall's addition there is five town powers now so in order to give the user uh, more control over roll lists we decided to add this bucket so you can control the number of tea pals basically pretty much common coven pretty much does the same thing all coven rolls but not coven power neutral pariah is our bucket for the witch con rolls as you know from town of Salem one the rolls that are like said survive and see town lose condition is back but neutral pariah rolls leave town when all town needs die basically if there's no town left Neutral Pariah rolls will leave town and it, it will send a message to all town. So like it's kind of an indicator that there's no town left. Neutral Pariah rolls win while dead as long as it's an evil win. Like their only win condition is to eliminate all townies or like make an evil win happen basically. To prevent like king making between evils, they leave town once all townies die. So they don't king make between the evils that are left. So that's how we tackle the king making problem of these roles neutral special is a role bucket where it's the roles are mostly game changing like vampire jackal curse soul and pirates pirate has been moved to neutral special because it's it's a joke role and it's still gonna be like that so we decided to move it to neutral special um so the point of neutral special is these roles like jackal curse soul Vampire and Pirate. These rolls can only spawn if there's a true any bucket or a neutral special bucket. They cannot spawn in any other random buckets. Like for example, the difference between regular any and true any is these four rolls cannot spawn in regular any. But these four rolls can spawn in true any. So that's what makes true all any and regular all any different in better TOS2. These rolls are very game changing. For example, Jackal recruits people. Curse Soul swaps, swaps rolls basically vampire converts people so they're really game changing stuff so that's why we've decided to limit them to a neutral special alignment and we we made true any and regular any as a separator for them all right let's get into new roles then if we explored all the role buckets so we have seven new roles actually it was eight but like since marshall got added to the base game i decided to not mention it here since you guys already know what marshall does the only difference is like um the role revealing animation is kind of better in our end and marshall in better tos2 uses the current trial number it doesn't reset the trial number like the base game so let's get started to the new roles that are getting added the first role is oracle which is a new town protective role which hasn't been revealed in any trailer because we were going to we decided we were going to re reveal it on release basically it's a, it's a TP role that can protect a specific role given by healing all of them, but you cannot do it twice. The other role is Star Spawn, which is one of the neutral pariah roles, has been revealed during a trailer. Next is Auditor, which is another neutral pariah role fo focuses on disabling targets, basically. And the other role you know from better to us one, Judge. Another neutral pariah role, source phone, auditor, and judge are our neutral pariah roles. And the next role, another familiar role from Better TOS 1, Banshee, is making a comeback to Better TOS 2. And Inquisitor, this is our executioner replacement for Better TOS 2. Um, we think executioner is too unhealthy for the game, so we decided to remove it from Better TOS 2. And Inquisitor, it's exactly the same as Throne of Lies, yes. Um, is our replacement for executioner is a natural evil so hopefully that's gonna work well and the last role is jackal as you all know the only difference from on jackal between like better tos1 and better tos2 is 
Jacket recruits can be both evil now. It was one time one evil in better TOS one. And a neutral pariah, neutral evil, basically neutral special, basically any role that leaves town cannot be recruited for obvious reasons. Neutral special can also not be recruited because it will be like game breaking. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, let's move on to the rules in detail. First is Oracle. Your ability is to cast an Aegis on a town roll each night. Aegis heals all players that has that specific roll. But you cannot do this to the same roll twice in a row. And you can only choose Oracle, aka self, all once for a game. If you are TT or a recruited Oracle, it's going to show all roles in the UI to you. So like you can... Protect your ally, protect jackal, protect covens, etc. So next rule is star spawn, neutral pariah. Yeah? You may isolate someone, including yourself, each night. Isolating someone, star bounds. Star bounds is super roadblock. Star bounds everyone that visits your target. I know a lot of people got this role wrong. It's not a direct roadblock. It's not like tavern keeper where you just visit your target and roadblock them. Um, you roadblock the visitors to the target, except attackers. Like star spawn targets visitors, not the isolated person. That's why you can isolate yourself, that you can roadblock the visitors to you. But attackers don't get affected by starbound. You will know which role you have starbound. It's gonna say like trapper notifications. You have starbound this role, for example. It doesn't affect attackers. And your day ability is you can daybreak once per game. Daybreak disables all day abilities. Like any role that has a day ability, after they break, they cannot use it for the end of the day. If, if a jailer is jailing somebody, it's going to get cancelled. The jailer is going to not jail for that night. Pirate will not be able to pirate anybody. And so on. goes like that. You leave town once all town members perish. I already explained in Neutral Pariah. One thing I haven't explained in Neutral Pariah is... Um, Neutral Pariah has an ethereal defense, which is a new mechanic that has, that has been added in Better Heroes 2. Ethereal defense is like prevents evils from killing the neutral pariah, but it makes them vulnerable to town. For example, if you get shot by Vigi, you're gonna you're gonna die. But if you get attacked by Kavan, you won't die because it's from an evil. It, you, it makes you more vulnerable to townies, but not against evils. Since you are on the side of evils, I think logically it makes sense. Our next role is auditor, familiar from better TOS one. But Auditor has gotten a rework compared to Better TOS 1. You may audit or smoke bomb someone each night, same as Better TOS 1. Auditing with roll block and remove all charges from the target. Different to Better TOS 1 where only one charge was permanently removed, um, Auditor in Better TOS 2 removes all charges, but the charges are returned after the Auditor dies or leaves town. So like there's a if you like kill the auditor you can get your charges back so it doesn't completely disable you. Uh, yes, it's way more harmful, but it can be like there's a counterplay. Just kill the auditor. Smoke bomb will obscure info and hide hide feedback on player. You will know your target's true role. And one more thing, if you audit somebody, you will no longer get the role information. Unlike better TOS one, you will only know your target's role if you are smoke bombing. Since like audit is such a powerful ability already. Uh, we did not think there's a need for doing so when you're auditing. If you visit a smoked player, for example, you will not get any results if you are TI. You will just know that your target was covered in smoke. And if you are smoked by an auditor, for example, if you get roadblocked, you will not know. If you get witched, you will not know that, for example. Once auditor dies and leaves town, all stolen charges will get refunded, yes. And next role is judge, as you guys know from better TOS 1. Judge has been buffed compared to better TOS 1. A lot of people have been complained about Judge dying night 1. So Judge also has ethereal defense now. Cannot be killed by elves night 1. And Judge has gained a night ability. Subpoena someone at night. You will know the true role and faction. Auditor and Judge now gets to know the true role and faction of the people they check. Like if Auditor smokes. This means they will know if their target is TT or not as well. So like in game modes like Apocalypse TT, you can find out TT and try to indirectly help them. Since Neutral Pariah doesn't affect the town trader timer anymore, it only starts when the Apocalypse dies. And your day ability is the same, call court during the day once per game. Court makes the chat anonymous and you gain two extra votes. 
uh, your chat appears as court and the rest appears as jury and judge has three votes during court so it's a hard counter to marshal basically and i'm sure a lot of people miss this role from better qos1 i'm excited anyone voted in, up in court will be immediately executed just like a marshal group lynch in your court in court your name is court and everyone else is jury you would once all town members perish yes now banshee coven deception your ability is to deafen someone each night Deafen people cannot hear whispers by other people, other messages, but can still speak. And deafening now obscures feedback like auditor. That's a buff compared to better TOS 1, but the role is very similar to how it was in better TOS 1. You cannot be deafened two nights in a row. This is, this is another change to kind of like prevent chain deafening. With the Necromicon, you also attack your target. Our next role is Jackal. Neutral Special. You start the game with two recruits which are opposing wing conditions. Compared to better TOS 1 where it was one town, one evil, and neutral evil could be recruited there. Now neutral evil, neutral parry, and neutral special roles cannot be recruited in this mod. And the recruits can be both evil that are like opposing. For example, a covenant and an apocalypse could be recruited together. So this is the, like this could create very strong jackal teams. But they're like the, they're still vulnerable due to the lifeling, but still. It has like a lot of poten potential to create insane comps. The recruits might long no longer win with their original win conditions and only win with you. The recruits know each other but not the jackal. Recruits only know each other from day one. But they don't know who jackal is but jackal knows both the recruits. So jackal might randomly whisper to you in the game if you are recruited. If a recruit dies the other one dies as well unless it's a transformed horseman of the apocalypse. You gain the ability to assassinate every night in that case. Assassination deals a powerful attack each night to your targets. And compared to better TOS 1 where Jackal had the scum shield, Jackal has a permanent defense in better TOS 2. Jackal can win while dead if the recruits clutch it. For example, you died early and your recruits won the game, you still win. If your recruits die and you win, the recruits also win. If they are dead. As long as like one of you wins. Right, our next role is Inquisitor from Throne of Lies, as you all know. You start the game with three heretics which are opposing wing conditions. Like, at least two of them can be same faction. Not, not all three of them cannot be the same faction, is our condition here. At night, you can either inquire or vanquish someone. Inquiring gives you information that if your target is a heretic or not. Vanquishing deals a basic attack to your target, but if you vanquish a non-heretic, you will lose your charges. You may, you may vanquish three times, but if you vanquish a non-heretic, you will lose your charges. And you may not vanquish knight one. You leave town if all heretics perish. Pretty straightforward and simple. Alright, that's it for our new roles. Now let's move on to new modifiers. Uh, we have four new modifiers in this first release. The first of all are, is Apocalypse Town Trader, as you all know. This is just Town Trader, but with the Apocalypse faction, there's a new game mode and casual mode called Apocalypse Town Trader, which uses this modifier. Um, hoping it's going to be fun. I will be playing it on stream after this. The mod releases. Hoping it's going to be fun. The other other modifier is Necro Passing. Allows you to pass Necronomicon between Coven members, which is being used in Coven Ranked and Jackal Returns role lists. And it's a game changer, I would say. It's an indirect buff to corner as well, since you get to find out different coven if they pass the book. And it like gives coven a lot of ability to maneuver around situations for getting jailed, etc. The third modifier is teams mode. People have been playing teams mode in the base game, and it's been very popular. So we have decided to add it to the better TOS2 mod. So in this in this modifier, if this modifier is on. The players in the game get divided into three teams randomly, Frogs, Lions, and Hawks. And everyone is in a faction chat, everyone can see their ability, everyone can see what their teammate does. And your goal is basically to win with your team. Pretty simple and straightforward. And our last modifier is pretty simple one, a minor one, but it's helpful in doing tournament stuff. It's anonymous names. It basically forces everyone to have an anonymous name. Um, like you may, everyone's a default name if this modifier is on. This will help us, like, for example, I have in mind the Jackal Returns tournament. 
So probably gonna use this on that one. But yeah, it's a minor modifier, but it's helpful in doing events like that. All right, we're moving on to balance changes. We have a lot of balance changes on the way, so this is gonna be fun. Hope you guys are gonna like it. Our first balance change, Amnesiac. Amnesiac's alignment has been changed from town support to just town. Basically, this means Amnesiac can only spawn in RT and common town. Like, Amnesiac is no longer an alignment. It can only spawn in random town and common town. Our next one is Deputy and Vigilante. So these roles got kind of buffed with Hangman deaths moving to end of the day. It's like TOS 1 now, like, you die to guilt in TOS 1, you, you die to hangman at the end of the day in TOS 2. So, you get to vote if you misfire, because we noticed how game-changing it was when uh, Deputy or Vigi misfired. They just instantly died, and Town instantly lost majority, so it was like very swingy in our opinion. So, we decided to move hangman deaths to the end of the day, so they at least get to vote if they misfire. And Town doesn't instantly lose majority. And deputy has been made unique because of how swingy the role's nature is. If there's multiple deputies, in town is kind of very strong in most games. So as a band-aid fix, we decided to make deputy unique for now. Alright, our next change is investigator. So investigator has been outright deleted from the mod because like it's the it's the weakest TI in the game right now, like since corner got buffed. There is no, like, we couldn't find any way to fix Investigator because, like, all mechanics have been used by other roles. And Investigator was, like, already overlapping with Corner in terms of a lot of things. And, like, the, the game has already 8 TI, so, like, without, one of them being gone doesn't change anything, I think. So, Investigator is gone in better TOS 2 unless, uh, like, Rework gets found one day, but it's not gonna be in lunch. Lookout. Lookout is no longer Astral. It was an interesting experiment, but it made the role too strong against Rampage roles and abilities. Lookout now has an attribute called Camouflage, with, where it makes them invisible to other Lookouts and Wildlings. Lookout basically keeps the like not being seen by other Lookout, but is no longer Astral anymore because we feel like it was too overpowered. So we're rolling things back in terms of that, but our Lookout now cannot see each other anymore. Prosecutor. So, uh, we know that BMG has pushed a change on Prosecutor recently. They, they made it so Prosecutor doesn't affect trials anymore. But this update dropped out like 10 days before our mod release date, so we didn't have time to um, like insert this change to our mod. So, Prosecutor is going to remain as it is in the launch. Except like no hangman. And if Prosecutor misfires, they just lose all charges. It still ends the day unless it's a martial group lynch, but it doesn't. It no longer lines to hangman because I don't think T Pav lining to hangman is a good idea. So like it's going to be like free buff prosecutor, but no hangman. But we will, we will revisit this role. We will probably like implement some different version of BMG's change. Probably that consumes one trial, but like. We didn't have enough time to implement it, so it's gonna stay as it is for now, that is. Our next change is Psychic. It's quite a simple change, but kinda, kinda is a game changer, which is a good and evil vision knights are swapped. For example, I know a lot of people will probably forget about this and post a knight one evil will and get caught as evil in most games. Um, so knight one is going to be a good will now, knight two is going to be an evil and so on, basically. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Now, Seer. As you guys know, BMG has nerfed Seer recently in the ranked season update. And I think we need to nerf it harder, even harder, so we went even further. Now, Seer cannot check the people they checked never again for the rest of the game. It's an even harsher nerf compared to BMG's nerf, that which prevents checking two nights in a row. But our nerf is very, like, our nerf is much harder. But I think it's working out well. That as long as like our beta sessions proved us, I think it's fine. Since like how powerful Seer is, I think it's balanced. Next one is Trickster. 
Trickster is getting a complete overhaul. Uh, Trickster now can like magic mirror a player every night, including themselves. Magic mirroring someone um, can absorb an attack if they get attacked. And you can store this attack to unleash it on another player in, an, in a, like another night in the later to the game. For example, if you save someone from Coven, you can use the Coven attack on another person that like in a night later, for example. But this only works against direct attacks. For example, you cannot save people from Crusaders since it's an indirect attack. You cannot save people from Vent. You can only save people from direct, atta uh, direct attacks like um, Coven, Berserker, Shroud, etc. Trickster was one of the most problematic roles in Town of Salem 2 Vanilla, and like it had zero counterplay. So I think this rework is kind of make gonna make it more balanced and counterable since Trickster is also like no longer sus to Sheriff and is no longer roll block, roll block immune. So it should be balanced. Right, our next change is Necromancer. Necromancer has got a minor change. Necromancer can use Potion Master and Witch now. Um, if you use Potion Master on a Coven member, it's gonna heal. If you use the Potion Master on a non-Coven player, it's gonna reveal them. So I think, I think it, like rather than not being able to use PM, I think this works for Witch. If you use Witch on somebody, it's gonna Witch them to themselves, right? If you use the witch on five, for example, five's gonna get witch to five. Very small change, but increases the necromancer's arsenal if their teammates die. So cursed soul, cursed soul has got a whole overhaul, which is a game changer, I would say. So cursed souls are a faction of their own now. Like all cursed souls in the beginning of the game know each other and can talk together and can win in the end of the game. Cursed soul is no longer a role that cannot win. Instead of swapping factions, it only swaps roles now. For example, if you swap with a jailer, you're a jailer with Cursed Soul faction now. And like, that solves the problem of swapping factions since like you would know the other faction members. Since you don't swap factions anymore. This solves the problem. And Cursed Soul has no longer has basic defense. So as I remember, this role is a neutral special role that can only spawn in true Olenny or a neutral special bucket is added. So this role is going to be very chaotic. Right, next change is Doomsayer. We removed Doomsayer's impact to the game by a great amount by delaying the death of Doomsayer if they guess correctly. So if th three people get doomed, they will be notified that night that you are doomed, for example. And when the day starts, every, everyone will get notified that, for example, X has been doomed. Or the all three players who got doomed. And the doomed players will die next night. They cannot be saved. By, but by making that delays, we reduce Doomsayer's impact to the game by a significant amount. So hoping this is going to be a good balance change. Our next one is Executioner. So Executioner, in my opinion, simply doesn't work. Um, like Executioner punishes Town for playing right, punishes Town for lynching correct people. For example, if an Executioner's target is Coven, and Town lynches a Coven, that means Town, play Town has played correctly. But, one of them gets tormented for that reason, for no reason. Like It punishes Town for playing correctly, which shouldn't be a rules mechanic. So like, that's why we decided to replace it with Inquisitor instead. Because Executioner simply doesn't work. Investigator is too weak, and Executioner doesn't work, so that's why we decided to remove these two roles from modded. Like, Investigator might get a rework soon, but I don't think there's a way to fix this role right now. Like, by how it works. So, Executioner is gone from better TOS2. Our next change is Pirate. Pirate, as I said before, has been moved to Neutral Special. It can only spawn in true any or Neutral Special now. And the other changes, since it's a joke roll, it's always going to be a joke roll. So we kind of did a joke change. Pirate can speak to their victim at night anonymously. If they pirate someone, you can speak at your victim anonymously. And that's it. Like, this is a joke roll, and we added a joke change. That's it. And it's not so special already. Like, some people like pirates, some people don't. So, like, we're not going to interfere with that. Roll still going to exist. So... 
our next change berserker so we noticed in the beta session games that berserker getting rb'd or jailed highly affects the game a lot so we made berserker being able to attack any night after night one basically like in case if you get roadblocked or jailed night two you can attack night three for example because this this changes games a lot and like this slows down a lot of games so hopefully this will fix that problem our next change is plague bearer so plague bearer is the like old wildling now but i think it's more balanced because it scales down later to the game since people will be infected pb can see who infected who exactly at night you for example you see one infected two if number one infected number two that night but the information will obviously scale down later to the game since more people will get infected already and you will become pestilence so i think that's what balances it out instead of old wildling who saw a ton of information which was way too op our next change is soul collector so soul collector frames the person they reaped as soul collector and if that person dies during the day no matter hangman nuke or lynch they get a bonus soul so it works like X basically. It gets rewarded with a soul basically. I think it's a I think it's a nice buff to the role in general. So our next change is Baker. Baker has got a full overhaul. Before I get into the overhaul, um, Baker no longer dies to starvation. Instead, Baker transforms it like anyone er everyone else alive has bread. Baker transforms. Baker dying was a stupid mechanic in my opinion. Baker shouldn't have died. Because Arsonist doesn't die. It's the same thing. Why does Arsonist not die then? It, it doesn't make sense. There's no reason for Baker to die there. So Baker no longer dies to starvation. So the overhaul is Baker has a UI like Potion Master now. It has three different types of bread. One of them reveals your target's role and anyone who visits. Like you're like a lookout and consig basically. The other one Roblox other players and the third one basically heals and it doesn't give bread if you use the third one on your teammates so you can use it without any worry of like not being able to do it again in the game i think baker needed this buff a lot because baker felt underpowered in most games we didn't have any change for famine right now but baker getting buffed is like make, makes baker one of the best accolades in the game right now so Hoping people will like this change. So that was it for better TOS to change log. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to join the Discord on the description to get the mod. There's an installation guide linked in the description as well. So yeah, I like reminder, I stream modded viewer games every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I hope to see you guys there. Hope you guys like the mod and changes. And I will see you guys in the next video.